So how exactly do you fix a Facebook or TikTok video ad creative that just doesn't perform? Where do you optimize it? And how do you turn a bad ad into a winning ad? If you're new to the channel, you don't yet know who I am. My name is Justin and I'm the founder at paidadvertising.com and I've spent profitably over $9.6 million on paid ads last year alone on the behalf of our clients and generated over $30 million in client revenue in the process across Meta, Google and TikTok. And with that said, let's get straight into today's video. So the two main metrics you want to look into if your video ad is not performing well is hook rate. Now, first and foremost, you obviously like need to know that those are soft metrics, meaning none of which I'm about to share right now matters if ROAS or cost per lead or cost per book call or whatever your metric is, is within KPI. So as an example, if your KPI is a two or three X ROAS, well, don't even think about optimizing your hook rate or your hold rate. If your current ad is performing above that, there's no need for it. You want to look into these if you want to do one of two things, either iterate, meaning you have a good ad, but you actually want to make a new variation of it in hopes of it performing better than the current version. Or number two, your ad is just not performing well at all. And I mean, it kind of goes back to number one. You just want it to perform better, okay? But honestly, a lot of the time, you have to kind of be conscious of how bad this current ad is. Because seriously, if you're like 10 times above your current KPI, like look, the ad doesn't need improvement. It needs to be completely changed. Usually you want to follow what is talked about in this video if your ad is slightly out of KPI. As an example, your KPI is 3x ROAS and you're hitting like a 2x ROAS, right? Your KPI is like a $300 cost per call and you're at like $425 cost per call. It's like you're slightly above KPI. You're not like crazy bad, but could be a lot better. So this is when you would want to look into this to optimize your video ad. So you don't want to look into your hook rate. How do you calculate your hook rate? Well, you look at your three second video views, okay? And then you divide the three second video views by the reach you're getting on this ad or by the impressions you're getting on this ad, which is gonna give you a percentage figure. You want your hook rate to be above 25% at the bare minimum. What that means is one out of four people who has your ad show up on their feed, they get hooked by the ad. So they start watching at least the first three seconds of it. So again, that KPI is 25% plus minimum. Our best ads usually will have a 35 to like 50% hook rate. So that's why I'm saying like minimum optimized for 25%. Hold rate, this is how many people actually watch the entire video. How do you get that? If it's a shorter video, so 15 seconds less, you can look at through play. If it's actually like a longer video, you could simply go to 100% video views and divide that number by the reach you're getting. So again, it would be your hold rate. How many people watch the entire video? That you want to be about 10%, one out of 10 people. I'll give a little bit of precisions about this one in a second, but let's start with the hook rate. Now, a low hook rate means that creatives are just not attracting attention and are easily being skipped. So people are just like scrolling. Whereas on the flip side, if you actually hook people in, then that means you have a good thumb stop ratio. You'll often hear that too, that name thumb stop ratio. It's also the same as hook rate. No difference. Now, this is the most important secondary metric for an ad. If it doesn't capture people's attention, no one will see the rest or click it. It's important to keep in mind that we do not want to attract attention just for the sake of having it. We want it to be for the right people who can be a potential customer for the product we advertise. Sometimes I see some like crazy out of pocket hooks. I'll give you an example. I saw an ad on Twitter the other day of uh, a guy who actually saw like he was selling essentially, I think it was like shapewear and it was just showing like a very up close like ass of a woman who's basically wearing the shapewear and like that woman is literally shaking her ass and there's a post-it that says like, wonder what you know shapewear this is and it, it like cuts into the actual UGC, which I'm like, a lot of women might find this degrading, to be honest. Like they might not really convert on that. Or again, if this is the type of woman you wanna attract and great, but this could actually backfire, right? So you gotta watch out about the type of hook you have. Would this have a high hook rate? Yes, because you're showing ass at the start of it, sex sells, so of course. But would this convert with the right people? Maybe not. So if you keep reading now, what are the ways to improve a low hook rate? Number one, you simply improve the hook visual, right? Showing a relevant visual hook to the audience is good to break the scroll and make them stop to listen. So as an example, um, you, well, this is, was an example like solar tanning, right? So you have a solar tanning product. You show a person that's like very sunburned, like super red summer, the type of summer you go like, right? Cause you exaggerate the problem you want to avoid. You start with a question or problem, right? Which this is good, especially for problem aware audiences Qu uh, for when you call out a problem from the start, right? Question is good for, I mean, honestly, pretty much any awareness level. Right? So five signs that your body needs vitamin C, or this is how I was finally able to cure my dog's fleas. Something that 
again, is going to be quite interesting or something that could be related, relatable, like intrigue for the audience. Now, stronger titles or hooks or again, overlays or like whatever is shown in those first three seconds. So perhaps having a stronger contrast in the text being used on screen, right? Or a more powerful message being more specific. So calling out the audience more at the start, right? This is how you can lose weight quickly switch to this is how hundreds of young mutters lose weight without killing themselves in the gym. That calls out a lot more the exact audience you want to watch. So the more specific you are, the more people feel compelled to stop and read or watch in this case. Now you could also change the angle of problem, which in other words, is basically changing the mass market desire, right? So I'm going to put that here. Actually, I'm going to write that mass market desire, change the desire. The first three seconds of that ad a three to five seconds, let's just call it that way. The hook should call out the desire of the audience. That's the main thing that should appear very clear at the start. It's like, what's the desire? What is this about? So if it's not hooking, then the desire isn't strong enough, right? Simple as that. As an example, relieving knee pain to run faster. Okay. Versus relieving knee pain to play with your children might hit a little more, right? a more compelling mass market desire. So that's usually how you fix hook rate. Now, how do you fix hold rate? Which basically now at this point, what that means is you have people clicking or you have people, sorry, watching the first three to five seconds of the ads, they're hooked. You know, you've got their attention, but then you lose their attention, right? It's like you made a very good pickup line, but then now like you're boring with your conversation. So then you lose interest of the said man or woman. So with that said, hold rate. Now, a low hold rate means that people aren't watching an ad all the way through. But watch out, very big precision here. Before you actually optimize your hold rate, always, always, always look at your ads conversion rate first before optimizing it. What do I mean by ad conversion rate? How do you calculate that? You can make a custom metric in your Facebook ads uh, columns or same thing on TikTok. And that custom metric, you actually divide purchases or complete payment. You divide that by the amount of landing page views. Okay, look at the conversion of the ad because as an example, if my ad has a good ROAS, if my hook rate is really strong, but my hold rate is very low, but my conversion rate is super high. All that means is like the start of your ad is so interesting that people don't even watch it all the way through. They're like already super interested and bought in at the start. So they click on it and they buy. It's like, you don't need to waste time, right? It's like you had me in the first five seconds. Stop talking. I'm ready to buy. So don't fix the rest or don't keep talking. If somebody's has their credit card out and it's like, look, I just want to buy. Yeah, but let me tell you more about all the features and that. No, no, no. I just want to buy. Okay. But like, let me tell you more. Dude, in other words, stop talking, close your mouth and just sell them. That's it. They're asking to be sold. So if your hook rate is strong, ROAS or cost per leader, cost per book call is strong, but, uh, and so is conversion rate, but hold rate is bad. Don't fix hold rate. There's no point in fixing it. But now as an example, if conversion rate isn't as good, but your hook rate is strong, conversion rate is still not strong. Okay. How do you get people more bought in, right? The more people keep watching your ad, the more bought in they become. Keep that in mind, right? You're doing the sales process, the sales pitch through the ad creative. So what are the solutions to improve a hold rate? Well, number one, you want to improve pacing. So making the ad just faster paced. As an example, you want to make sure you make cuts every one second. You add more transition. You use a faster paced, so higher BPM background music, right? A music that just sounds faster, right? A cetera. So you increase the pace of the ad. That way you increase again how like engaging the ad is. Second way, tonality or creator type. Some creators are just boring. They're on the camera and they don't know how to talk or like they don't sound energetic. They're not doing a good job at conveying the energy of your product. It's bad business, right? People are not going to watch somebody who's boring. On the flip side, other creators will resonate better with your brand. Try men versus women. Try different demographics, so different age range of creators. Try different ethnicities. You'll notice and even accents that I have right here. You'll notice that people react better with different creators. So that again, will help you have a higher hold rate. Now, important, change positioning. If you hook the viewer, that means your mass market desire is usually quite strong, right? Because this is the first claim you're making. If you haven't really captivated them now, after like they're not really sticking, it means the overall messaging is not resonant, like resonating with them. And that goes back to this right here, right? You could actually capture somebody's attention, but you want to make sure this is the right customer. So going back to that right here, your positioning might be wrong. As an example, change the way you're speaking to them, the positioning, the market awareness level. You might be speaking to them about a problem you're not even aware they have. So speak to them in an unaware manner, right? Your hook was great, but the rest of your ad is not congruent, right? Or you might speak to them about a problem, but they're already aware of that problem. They don't need to hear about it again. They want solutions for it. Go down an awareness level. Finally, and honestly, one of the most important points for why hold rate is bad. The majority of people who see your ad, especially on Facebook and Instagram, more so than TikTok, they watch stuff with the sound off and they have to manually turn on the sound if they want to hear about it. TikTok, usually most people are going to have the sound on. Facebook and Instagram, a big portion of the audience has the sound off. So 
If you haven't yet, I implore you to optimize your video while using captions. So make sure that people can read the script, basically read what the video is about without having sound on and optimize for no volume, right? Make the video interesting, have animations and such where do a simple test, like literally your best performing ad on the account, turn off the sound and watch it. Usually you'll find that this ad is very watchable with the sound off. And I'll say the same thing. Usually the worst performing ad on your account, do the same test, turn off the sound, watch it. Usually you'll realize that it's not really well optimized for somebody who is sound off. So make sure you optimize it for someone who would have no volume. And if you made it all the way through, you own an e-commerce brand or an info product business, and you want my team to run your Facebook, TikTok, and or Google ads and produce high converting ad creatives for yourself, click the link down below and book in a call to speak with our team today at paidadvertising.com. And on that note, make sure you check out other videos on the channel for some more useful e-commerce marketing tips. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.